Can you believe that this year the DeLorean celebrates its 40th anniversary as a car? Everybody loves a DeLorean, right? But probably none more than a guy in Bristol, which is where I've just arrived at, who's wanted one since he was a little tot, when he turned 16, managed to get one and import one over with the help from his folks and effectively restore it so that it was ready for when he passed his driving test. It's his first car. It's a daily driven DeLorean. I have to go and feature this. Welcome to the Late Break Show. I can see it. I can see the DMC from here. <laughs> it's got a stainless steel cleaner on it. Miles! Hi Johnny. Hey. I'm just pretending to clean in my nicest clothes. <laughs> in your nice clothes. How are you doing? I'm good. It's brilliant. After we've spoken online and stuff, it's brilliant to actually come and meet you yeah. finally. The DeLorean, the garage, it, it's suspiciously tidy in here, Miles. It is, yeah. Have you, have you done this for me? Yes, I have. <laughs> I have indeed. Thank you. I appreciate it because this is, this is, I wish my garage was this methodical. It's brilliant. But we're not here to talk tools. We're here to talk about, about you and your relationship with cars. You don't get people your age owning DeLoreans ever, I suspect. In 2016, I went to... Belfast, because uh, there was a big DeLorean meet there that my mum had found out about. I remember her saying that we are going to get a DeLorean because she realised just how good the community was. And really? Yeah. Because that's the thing, they, so your folks presumably, they, they pretty quickly saw that this was not a passing phase. Yeah, it, it This was not going away. The three films had come out long before you turned... Well, I was born. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh gosh, yeah. So what year were you born? 2000. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, the DeLorean will always be a project, I suppose. It's never finished in the, the way that exactly. these things aren't. Talk to me about this thing. This looks very interesting. Well, um, this one is a race car I'm building, uh, completely custom except for a few donor parts from a 1.8 MX-5. Yeah. Uh, it's called the Death Trap because it is. <laughs> I hope it isn't. I, re I really hope it isn't. Well, we'll see. If there's a death trap too, then obviously this one didn't work. <laughs> yeah, so I was at a pub with uh, family friends and I was talking to one of them uh, who works in a garage and I was saying, I'm sure I could build a race car, just complete simplicity, yep. no technology, yep. uh, basic, bare bones, ultra lightweight and a fair amount of power and some good tyres, good handling. Yeah. And I could beat a Ferrari lap time. And that is what I'm adamant about. Uh, so cost pick, pick a bad Ferrari for a start. Well, I didn't. I've uh, gone for the bold one. I think it was a Ferrari 458 that set it, though. Okay, a good Ferrari. A good Ferrari, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so Castle Coombe track day times. Yeah. No idea if the driver was any good of that car. <laughs> but the fastest <laughs> Ferrari lap time, um, I think it's 1 minute 10 something. I'm MX-5 engine, gearbox, and the, like the rear subframe. Yes. Basically. So you bought a rotten MX-5 is my guessing. I did, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I actually bought that one to restore and then obviously found more rust uh, because it's an MX-5. Because it's an MX-5. Yeah, so. yeah. And no one ever invests in rust proofing. Nope. Short-sighted people. I've noticed a lot of young people really like MX-5s. Yeah. There's no prejudice there. I think the prejudice thing is probably with, uh, with older people. Yeah, dismissing them as just a hairdresser's car yeah all of that stigma and stuff but i know that i mean they're an amazing driver's car yeah. so how did you come up with this design was this a bit of a like have a look on the internet and see how other people have done it well i used to make a lot of go-karts okay so um i just think basic triangular frame yeah just basic triangulation uh, is nice and simple so that's what the main frame is yeah it's, it's brilliant how much does it weigh do you think i'm uh, approximately i think about 300 to 400 kilos at the moment. 
wow. So that's really light. Yeah. I mean, an MX-5 is light. Yeah. I've only spent about four hundred pounds on it. Have you? Yeah. Do you want me to start it up? Yeah. Does it run? It does. Yeah. It's all wired in. Yep. Go on then. Well, any excuse, any excuse. Does it have an exhaust? Uh, not much. No, because I haven't seen one going to the back. No, it will be a side exit. It'll side be side exit because yeah. it's lighter, right? Straight out here. It's in neutral, right? Oh, this wires, come Please on. Please make sure it's it is in neutral. neutral. Brilliant. That's actually it's not as loud as I was expecting it. It's quite loud. It's quite loud. Okay, quite loud, yeah. I've had to cut all the wiring on the ECU to yeah. just the bare essential. Yeah. Soon. What do your neighbours think of, of I, all I of don't this? think they like me. Don't they? They haven't said it though. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> is, it, is it the noise, the banging and the noise? <laughs> and the, yeah. Angle grinding. I'm just speaking from experience. I remember our, our, our neighbours were very tolerant of yeah, my brother they're, especially. They're very tolerant. Can I have a sit in? Yeah. God, that's actually. <laughs> that's actually all right. So originally this sat over the subframe in line with the wheels, but now it's completely back. Wow. It feels really good. It's essentially, it's front mid engine. You've possibly created budget brilliance. Yeah. Uh, there's still loads more to do. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, it's really impressive, Miles. It's really good. It's inspiring. So the, you're going to IVA this car? Yeah, it'll be a bit like a Caterham sort of thing. But yeah, it'll yeah. look more like a sports car. Yeah. You have a daylight MOT. Oh, I was just going to get it fully road eagle. Oh, yeah. You don't need a windscreen for an MOT, there, do you? No. Um, basically, the rules are: if it has doors, the doors have to work. Uh, they have to lock properly and stuff. Yeah. So I'm thinking, if I don't have doors, yeah, it's not a problem then. If I have a windscreen, then I need demisting stuff, so I don't want to have a windscreen. Or and wipers, you don't need wipers. Exactly. Yeah. So if it doesn't need it, it's not going to have it basically. Yeah. Just to make it as easy as possible passing RVA. So it's a it's a nice sort of cheap-ish project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You obviously can't stop tinkering. No, I if I'm not building something, I get really bored. Yeah. I have to be building or adjusting something. Yeah. Well, luckily, you've got a DeLorean. <laughs> no disrespect to the build quality, but you probably tinker with that quite a lot. Yeah. Was yours crap when you bought it? Yeah. OK. <laughs> it's crap now. <laughs> and let me get this right, because it's out there and it's been in the rain all night. Yes. Is that still your everyday car? That, yes, I have to drive that to work every day. You do? Yeah. Let's take it for a drive. All right, so basically the oil gauge doesn't work. The fuel gauge works when it wants to, which <laughs> right. is sometimes. Brilliant. Uh, the speedometer doesn't work, <laughs> but the temp gauge, the volt gauge, and the rev counter do work. Original radio looks... Uh, looks... No, that's, that's actually an aftermarket one I installed. Kept the original faceplate from the Craig radio and yep. the uh, knobs for the volume and stuff. Yeah, it looks great. Drive closer to 18 miles now than 88. Enjoy. But I won't know because it doesn't. So I'm just going to go by RPM. Oh, when you accelerate, it goes down. When you brake, it goes up. OK, Miles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, and the transmission lever, the lock doesn't work. So to try not to nudge it into reverse by accident. Oh, because it will go. It will go into reverse. Oh, I'll park. Blimmin' heck. Um, OK, all right. all right. Is it shut? He says the door card regularly falls off, so it's getting hot already. I know I'm like a sort of a too tall, too grey Marty McFly. It's just amazing to see the responses from people when, when they see a DeLorean. And everybody knows a DeLorean. Everybody. So this really is the first time I've properly driven a DeLorean. I'm actually really enjoying it. I always knew that driving a DeLorean was not going to be about performance because the car is a performance by just existing and just driving past you. I should be listening to a bit of Huey Lewis and the news now, shouldn't I? I spoke to your dad 
Yeah. And, he, and he mentioned that ever since you were a boy, the DeLorean thing was... My obsession. The force was strong. Yeah. I think when I was younger, it was the Back to the Future DeLorean, the time machine. It had to yeah. be the time machine. Yeah. So, so you would keep finding cars, pinging the links to your parents, saying, what about that one, what about this one? Yeah, and they'd usually just go, no. Um, okay. Yeah, I was looking through my phone uh, on eBay in a maths lesson, and I stumbled across this. And what condition was this in? So at the time, it was a non-runner. The intake manifold on the engine was all in bits. It wasn't on the car. The brakes and stuff, everything basically needed redoing. It had been sat for 24 years. Since, had it? Yeah, 1994. Uh, it had been sat in a barn. Wow. So you, yeah. put, you, you put the bid in? Yeah, like last, last second, pretty much. Last 15 seconds, I think, roughly. Wow. And how much did you get the car for? I think it was £9,200. OK. And that's so, about as cheap as you could ever find a DeLorean? Yeah. That wasn't fire damaged or no, that upside down? Genuinely was. I think it's possibly still the cheapest like eBay DeLorean since. Is it? Yeah. I first got it started 30 days exactly after I got it. So a month of engine work. And I think it was four months again, roughly, had it completely road legal. Really? That was, that's quick. Yeah. So the front end, I, I, I know that it's made of GRP. Yeah. As far as I'm aware, it's just fiberglass, completely fiberglass underbody. Uh, it's filled with foam for crash protection. OK, of course. Yeah. A surprisingly safe car at the time. It was yeah. designed to be an economical, sort of environmentally-ish friendly sports car at the time. Yeah. Which it turned out to be more of a GT car. But at the time, I think about 25 to 30 miles to the gallon is actually pretty good for the early 80s. It's mad how prices of DeLoreans have, have just risen and risen and risen. And hindsight's a wonderful thing, but I remember when you could get a really clean one for like 12 grand. Why didn't I strike? Why didn't I pounce? You're an idiot, Johnny. It's one of those cars where I still want one, even though I know they're a bit rubbish. And now that I've got a son and a daughter who have been introduced to the Back to the Future trilogy and they love it, I feel like I could legitimately buy one of these and it could become part of the family. I just still think it's so strange that a car that had such a short life has become so notorious and so memorable for various reasons and so synonymous with a film. And that film only came out, what, three years? Less than three years after the last DeLorean rolled off the line. So it was still a pretty new car. The wounds were still quite raw, probably, around, surrounding the reasons for DeLorean going bankrupt and the whole drug thing. And I do wonder that without Back to the Future, would we still care about this car? Would we still appreciate this car? I just don't think on any level we would. Because it's that silhouette of the doors. Ah, oh, the theatre of the gulls. People buy them just for those doors, don't they? Oh, yeah. Do they're... they ever get boring? No, you sort of get used to it, but it's, yeah. I don't know, on a, on a nice sunny day, there's something about a sunny day. You open the door and it's just it's excellent. I love the fact that in here, it, it, it is a bit worn, it, isn't it? You've got some, very worn, got some yeah. colour-coded gaffer tape. Yeah. It's, the... it's not quite colour-matched, though. I need to, <laughs> I need to buy some colour-matched gaffer tape. Yeah. Um, the original design was to be mid-engined and yeah. actually use a rotary engine made by Mazda. That's right. I remember there was a talk of it being a wankle. Yeah. Yeah. So they were going to do that, but then John DeLorean wanted somewhere to put golf clubs. So of, of it's like, got to have a parcel shelf. So they so chucked the engine back. that's for a golf bag? Yep. It fits with golf clubs, apparently. I don't know. I don't play golf. No, no, I don't. I so, don't. Crazy golf, definitely. I'm yeah. <laughs> so, 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 apparently that's not legit. Yeah. Is it not? <laughs> I don't, no, not really. So where John DeLorean's golf clubs would have been, you've got some aftermarket speakers. Yeah, noticed. the 
the originals were mounted in the sides. Yeah. They're also a really strange size, so I just decided to make my own replacement back panel and put some 6 by 9s in it, which are a much more standard size. Yeah, very good. I've got my gauge pod with the Gullwing door logo and the DMC logo there, which is just great. I've got my louvers in the rear view mirror, which never get boring. Never. The fuel gauge seems to be ticking like a clock. <laughs> got that lovely squared off Giugiaro styling, which is so noticeable and similar in many ways to the uh, the VW Sirocco, which predates the, the DeLorean by, I don't know, nearly five years. When I sat in it, I was amazed at how deep the footwells are. Yeah, it can fit probably, I think, six foot five. It was, John DeLorean was six four. He was, he was tall, wasn't he? Yeah, he was very tall. Mm. So you got automatic gearbox. Yep, three speed slash box. There were manuals, weren't there? There were. I'd expect there to be more autos than manuals because it was I for would. the American market. Yeah, I would, yeah. But then I heard that there are more manuals than autos. Oh my gosh. I've got to ask you while we're looking at the interior, have you thought about going down the road of um, the time machine replica? Yeah. Because you must get asked this. This I, must be one of your FAQs. Yeah. Well. I'd, obviously the one in the film they drilled loads of holes in it and I'm not going to do that and I'm not going to take out the rear windows no so I thought if I leave the exterior looking like a standard one yeah. and then just put some of the interior components in yeah. then it's a bit of fun yes this car was built in October 81 I just noticed the the ID number as I as I sat in it and I like to see one that's actually leading a fairly hard life I mean it doesn't get pampered in the garage. It isn't mint. You know, I've got some gaffer tape on the seats and there's rattles. Do you know what? Actually, mechanically, it feels really good. The bonnet isn't properly shut, but Miles said that's because in cold weather it doesn't. When it gets hot, it does shut properly. Because remember, this is a glass fiber tubbed car. The stainless steel isn't structural. The stainless steel is cladding. Well, show me under here. Show me under, yeah. the, under the bonnet. I love the fact it's a used car. You've got your stainless steel cleaner in there. Yeah, yeah, all the breakdown stuff underneath. Oh, is that <laughs> what it is? Look, tow rope, yeah, compressor, emergency hoodie. Control. Yeah, this is the underbody. This yeah. is all fiberglass on this. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you put your fuel in here. Okay. So you have to open the bonnet every time you fill up. I didn't know that. It's actually quite a simple interior. I really like isn't it. Isn't it? I just love the sort of everything sort of square but yeah. neat. Yeah. And it's all symmetrical as well. Yeah. It was the size of window switches. Yeah, they're all huge. They are massive. Yeah. So have you started building a flux capacitor? I have, yeah. I've got <laughs> most of it done. So. <laughs> of course you have. It's just so good. I forgot to say as we were inside about the windows, the little window within the window. Yeah, it's just a little toll booth. Just just so you can wait. It is, isn't it? It's amazing. Order your fast food. This one shuts very nicely. So, oh, yeah. it's taken a lot of adjustment. <laughs> so weeks, weeks of work on that. Let's yeah. move to the back. Now this is the this is the angle of, that might be my favourite of the DeLorean. Yeah, I do. I do really like the back, especially when uh, the tail lights are clean. That red really They're, shows up nicely. They remind me of like an exciting '80s board game. It really is the definition of the 80s, isn't it? It's that, and then it's the font they used for the bumper yeah. um, lettering, which just looks so good. It was designed yeah. and developed in, in the, the 70s. 70s. So that's where you've got to look at it. it. It looks more modern than most 70s cars. Exactly. This is the bit I don't understand. You've obviously got the, this open void, and yeah. it's not for luggage from what? It's just a waste of space, really. <laughs> It's just dust. Yeah, it's, it's just a trap for wasps and flies. <laughs> I, just, uh, I, I love it because I love the little back window and the whole. Yeah. But of course, this is open to the elements. Then, so, then you've got this sort of griddle. Yeah, this is the barbecue bit. So you put your. Uh, your well, you've got foods. eggs on the right, sausage on the left. Yeah, you've got the vegetarian the bit. And yeah. <laughs> but was it? You, so you can't really put no luggage in there. No, no, nothing can go here unless you really were desperate and you sort of have to put something in there, like a sleeping bag or a pillow. So under this, 
uh, is cable tie. Yeah, yeah. crucial cable, cable tie. tie there. Look, that's a fresh one. Yeah. OEM. <laughs> PRV. Yeah, uh, two point eight. Yeah, I I have a Volvo with that engine in. Yeah. Yeah, I do need to sell it actually, <laughs> but uh, not because of the engine, but. I, but yeah, it's exactly the same. And I, I always believe that the DeLorean DMC12 was a mid-engine car, but it actually, it really isn't, because yeah. the engine would be there, wouldn't it? The, the engine is completely behind the axle. Yeah, so completely. It's got some wayward handling. So yeah, replaced, basically the entire fuel system has been replaced, and it's got a new distributor cap, new wires. I kept the original coil, because apparently that's pretty good, and it works fine. Okay, so. That's the same coil that I've got on my Beetle. Yeah. Yeah, it's exactly the same. And you, this has an air conditioning compressor. That's that thing there, isn't it? Yeah. So it was actually originally made for R12, which is no longer made because it's deadly or something. So I've put R134A in it, which is apparently smaller and it can get out the pipes. Okay. When I got it, got it gassed at the end of the heat wave, which is obviously- It's a good time to get air conditioning gas just at the end of the British heat wave. Yeah, <laughs> just as it goes cold again. <laughs> To just see if it worked? Yeah, and it worked fine. Did it? And then it went really cold, so I didn't need it. So it may have all leaked out. <laughs> I haven't actually tested it. And I notice, and I think I saw it beforehand, you've got a nice stainless exhaust on this. I do, yeah. It's the uh, club, the DeLorean club exhaust, the UK one. The DeLorean have their own club exhaust. Yeah. So that's what most DeLoreans run around on. It sounded good. It does sound quite good, yeah. Yeah, it does sound good. It's got a bit of a sort of resonant frequency there where it gets really loud. He's adamant that he would never EV it. I think I probably would. Because I don't think this engine is a party piece of the car, but... Miles said he's lowered it and I can tell it does feel a little bit more in control than I was expecting it to be. Steering's really stiff, even at speed actually. Miles said he rebuilt the brakes and he's put EBC um, discs and pads on it and uh, as EBC are a sponsor of one of my playlists on the Late Brake Show, uh, I was really pleased to report that the brakes feel fantastic. This has got red stuff pads on it, all round. These look good, white lettering, just on the back as well. I do like that. I think it's a good look, Miles. You got it. It's got a good stance to it. So I've got uh, the DeLorean Europe lowering springs on yeah. the front. I've still got the original springs on the back. Okay. But I've got Spax shock absorbers all around. Yeah. Uh, and the rears are height adjustable, so I've just wound them all the way down. Of course. Just to get it looking good. It does sit really well, I have to say. I have actually got a subwoofer in it. Have you? Yeah, I'll show you. I don't like cutting up the original panels. That's So I've cut out a plywood replacement. Oh, that's cool. So, yeah, normally that's for fire extinguishers and then more fire extinguishers. Yeah, but you've got a fire extinguisher up there. Yeah, I've got one here and another one in the boot. I bet you have. It's five bar of pressure in the fuel system. And when you're driving along, if you haven't replaced the fuel lines for stainless ones, they can suddenly spring a leak with the 40-year-old lines and Oosh. then just sprays fuel all over the exhaust and then the back of the car's on fire and that's it. And it's in seconds that happens, right? Yeah, by the time you, you see smoke or flames and pulled over, you've probably already set fire to the fiberglass. So, Sugar. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's why I've got that. a lot of fire extinguishers. No, be prepared, absolutely. Yeah. Good man. So it's a double Y-frame backbone. It's similar to the Lotus Esprit chassis, which this was sort of a prototype yeah. uh, for the Lotus, so they've developed their they tested it basically as well, yeah. what they use this for. It does actually feel more Lotus-like. Don't get me wrong, it's, you know, it's not as, as sharp at all as a Lotus. It's certainly not as quick as a Lotus. It's kind of like an easy listening Lotus. That's how I would say. This is Miles' rolling restoration. There's always bits that need doing and he's gonna do them as and when he can afford to or he feels like it. But fundamentally, the car has to be mechanically reliable to be used every day. It's not often you can say that someone has a daily driven DeLorean, but it's not often you can say that somebody has had one since they were 16. 
And that's why I'm going to coin you the Man DeLorean. Man <laughs> DeLorean. Can you see what I've done there? I don't even like Star Wars, so I'm allowed to say it. That's controversial, isn't it? I prefer <laughs> Back to the Future to Star Wars. Yeah, so do I. Yeah. <laughs> The only person I know who's as big into Back to the Future as you are is the man behind the camera. Yeah, Mark. This is the most excited I've ever heard him um, about a shoot. I came to the shoot today in this, the rear wheel drive Porsche Taycan, which is the cheapest electric Porsche you can buy. 70,600 quid. Obviously, that is the future in terms of propulsion, EV, really efficient, fast charging, quiet, or future sounds. I keep thinking about these. When this car came out, the engine was almost the sort of the least interesting bit. The concept of the build and the look was amazing. And I know you can buy one of these as a fully EV converted car in the UK, but also from the DeLorean Motor Company that exists in Texas, uh, for probably about the same price thinking about it as this question is will that look as good as that in 40 years and will that be remembered in 40 years it's hard to say isn't it because that has fully cemented its place in the history books as we celebrate its 40th birthday everybody knows everybody who looks at this car today behind the camera there's people walking by everybody knows it's a DeLorean even if you even if you're not into cars it still looks so good doesn't it but half of me would love to find one of these that's had a really unfortunate crash and put some of its organs in that. I wish John DeLorean was still alive. What would he think? Or he might be in prison. That's another story. You know, were they as badly made as everyone says? Well, find me a car that was developed in the late 70s that was built really well. I mean, there's not that many of them, I don't think. And I say that in the nicest possible way. <laughs> Goodbye. What I love about doing this YouTube channel is it's attracted so many different people, different people with different cars, different tastes, different cultures, it's wonderful. And when I found out about Miles the Mandalorian, I really wanted to feature it. So it's so good to see somebody of that age striving to own a car that's seemingly out of reach and sacrificing so much and here it is. So I hope you've enjoyed this story as much as, as I have filming it. If you haven't already subscribed to The Late Break Show, why not hit the subscribe button? If you like this video, click like. Maybe you've got another very interesting car or an interesting story, let me know via the website. If you're a Patreon, thanks for supporting this channel through Patreon. Cheers.